The sin of the young men was very great in Yahweh's sight, for they were treating Yahweh's offering with contempt. But Samuel was ministering before Yahweh. Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife, saying, May Yahweh give you, give you children by this woman to take. And Yahweh was gracious to Hannah. She conceived and gave birth to three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of Yahweh. Now Eli, who was very old, heard about everything his sons were doing to all Israel and how they slept with the women who served at the entrance to the tent meeting. So he said to them, Why do you do such things? I hear from all the people about these wicked deeds of yours. No, my sons, it is not a good report that I hear spreading. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of Yahweh. Now Eli, who was very old, heard about everything his sons were doing to all Israel and how they slept with the women who served at the entrance to the tent meeting. So he said to them, Why do you do such things? I hear from all the people about these wicked deeds of yours. No, my sons, it is not a good report that I hear spreading among Yahweh's people. If a man sins against another man, Yahweh may mediate for him. But if a man sins against Yahweh, who will intercede for him? His sons, however, did not listen to their father's rebuke, for it was Yahweh's will to put them to death. And the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favor with Yahweh and with men. Now a man of Elohim came to Eli and said to him, This is what Yahweh says. Did I not clearly reveal myself to your father's house when they were in Egypt under Pharaoh? I chose your father out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to go up to my altar, to burn incense, and to wear an ephod in my presence. I also gave your father's house all the offerings made with fire by the Israelites. Why do you scorn my sacrifice and offering that I prescribed for my dwelling? Why do you honor your sons more than me by fattening yourself on the choice parts of every offering made by my people Israel. Therefore declares Yahweh, the God of Israel, I promised that your house and your father's house would minister before me forever. But now Yahweh declares, Far be it from me. Those who honor me, I will honor but those who despise me will be disdained. The time is coming when I will cut short your strength and the strength of your father's house so that there will not be an old man in your family line, and you will see distress in my dwelling. Although good will be done to Israel, in your family line there will never be an old man. Every one of you that I do not cut off from my altar will be spared only to blind your eyes with tears 
and to grieve your heart, and all your descendants will die in the prime of life. I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to what is in my heart and mind. I will firmly establish his house and he will minister before my anointed one always. Then everyone in your family line will come and bow down before him for a piece of silver and a crust of bread and plead, appoint me to some priestly office so I can have food to eat. Someone said to me once, because of my zeal and love for the word of Yahuwah, that I should go to school to become an ordained minister. <laughs> but that's not the priesthood of Almighty Yah. That's a counterfeit. That's the Babylonian harlot church system. Yeshua says, You are a chosen generation and a royal priesthood called to declare and proclaim the praises of He who has brought you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. We are ordained into the priesthood. In the order of Melchizedek, by dying it's through the death and resurrection of the lamb through the lamb who was slain for us and risen from the dead three days later that purchased us the grace to walk in his footsteps. There's only one way, the way. Those who love their lives will lose them, but those who lose their lives will surely find them. We can't enter the kingdom of heaven. We can't proclaim him. We can't minister as priests of his kingdom unless we die. to our flesh to this life in every way may we embrace the death of Christ so that we can partake in his resurrection and his glory when we are revealed he chooses the weak things to shame and confound the strong and the foolish things to shame and confound the wise. The priesthood is born through crushing. The 
That's where the oil of anointing comes from. The crushing. That's where the wine comes from, from the wine press. The old has passed away and the new has come. We need and have one teacher and one teacher only. And that's Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah. He says that you have no need that anyone should teach you, for the anointing you have received is not counterfeit but real, and is able and sufficient to teach you all things all things pertaining to his word and all things in general. We have one mediator between us and the Father. And that's Christ. That's the Lamb. That's the Lion of Judah. Take heed to the warning. For Yahuwah has numbered your days. Those who have received his light do not walk in darkness. O oh, faithless and perverse generation. They who have trampled his law, they who have trampled the widow, they who have created the widow and the orphan, have trampled the son of Yah underfoot. In every way there is. 
my God is justice. He is faithful and his word does not return void. And it is up to you whether you want to be on the wrong or right side of it. When the gavel falls, when the hammer falls, I had a vision of Yahuwah's fist above a particular area it was raised in anger and judgment waiting to see who would take notice of it who would see it, who would hear it, who would accept it and get out of its way, get out of his way before it falls because it will shake everything. He will decimate everything with his right hand. There will be nothing left. For my God is an all-consuming fire. His word, my savior, my redeemer, is an all-consuming fire and a devouring force against the darkness and all that is done there. Brace yourselves. For you do not fear the Lord, and therefore you do not have wisdom, and you do not have pity. You do not have his wisdom, and you do not have his pity if you do not fear him. That should terrify you. Even the demons tremble at his name. And we know what their ends is. And so what will be the ends of those of you who do not tremble before the Lord thy God? What will become of those who tremble for themselves or for man or for every other fear except the fear of Yahuwah? Yahweh. Tremble. Tremble. If you would like to join us here on the live section of the channel this evening and over the next couple of nights, y'all willing, we are going to be loading 
into the bow, the imprecatory warfare psalms, also known as the cursing psalms. There is a time, a reason, a purpose, and a season for these weapons. They are not to be used from a place of loftiness, lording, and triumphalism. Not to be used from a place of bitterness against man. For vindication and vengeance is... Yahweh's he says he will repay the purpose for the imprecatory warfare cursing Psalms is for those who are oppressed afflicted needy and under the duress of tormentors oppressors and the wicked and their needs that they may be brought low, at least as low, so that they will have the type of contrition that Yahuwah does not despise, that they will come under his mercy through repentance. Teshuva is our refuge. Sacrifices and offerings, he says, he does not desire, but a broken spirit and a contrite heart. If you look up the word contrite, it means to be ground finer than the finest dust. An object that can be no longer ground down further. That type of lowliness, that type of contrition, that type of pain. For the sake of salvation of their souls, Yahuwah is going to strike down every high, lofty, and proud thing. And he's using his last day's army, his wheels within wheels that are full of eyes, having endured the torture of the synagogue of Satan. Yahuwah has had enough. And his mercy is expiring. It has expired. And so we're going to pray these imprecatory warfare songs. We're going to use his word because it is faithful. It is powerful. It is sharper than a two-edged sword and able to divide bone from marrow and the thoughts from the intents of the heart. We want to to rejoice, as it says in scripture, in his righteous judgments. Because it, because it is better to suffer the affliction of judgment that we may come to repentance and a knowledge of the truth before his wrath is poured out and it is too late to repent. So you are welcome to stay tuned and keep your, keep your eyes peeled on the uh, live section of the channel. The gospel of Christ brings deliverance and freedom to all who are oppressed. I love you. To be continued. Bye.
scribes and Pharisees. Oh, yeah. Woe to you, hypocrites. Whitewashed hypocrites. For man's bones, whitewashed vessels, oh dens of iniquity, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh. Rise up, rise up, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh. Rise up, rise up, Yeshua, Lion of Judah. Just and righteous are you. Stillness, 
Nakaya, Almighty Creator, I am that I am. O do of Israel, that lands on those who watch and wait and trust in the night. Be still, be still and know. Yahuwah, your Elohim, fights for you. Can you feel it, O oh, dew of Israel? The light of the morning sun, the warmth of his rising. Can you feel it? Can't you perceive it? 